more time, give it to me one more time. Rubao mi umechi mabeji doa kubena wa duong ki wan lo tiyan wama ki lungo gini luo magi aki tunku mali me Uganda ikit me we ikit me miel ikit me boko lo kubena iyo po ama olo ni ngechi ki ngene wa beri kaya arme kwa yara lo tiyan wa man tiyan ya yu mada ni isho eni mo olo ni ngechi ki ngene beri ching cha biet weng wa boko lo kwa winyo kit kwa pa lo tiyan man gu kwa ni gu don ni ning doa kubena gu kwa no kwa ne wa kwa beri kaya awa kama diet me winyo kit kwa ma mege ki lungo nye ane ema kwa yara beri ki kaya aro me doa iwo program eni tiyan ya yu mada da dok bene a tiki war ma dieto twal ma kele i wula tin wa ma eno be la go we le mono lo ni instrumentalist a ngay ni won le mono be na be dok tak to twal ki lo ni ni maiko o wuma ka ini we ro we ni go yo we pange ka pie bu ni ning maiko e wuma o wuma a le ngono ye wa ko lo kon interview wa eni ki le mono pian le ba chuli wa no le plu wa ne pe tak to twal maiko Welcome to the show. Thank you for your time. Very to us. Great to have you today in in the little world that you know. Eh, wonti nining. Ah, this is Michael Uma. Ah, what is your last name? I'm a guitarist, producer, uh performer, uh entertainer and many other things that are not musical like business and yeah. farming. Of course. Yes. Welcome, welcome yeah. to One Law TV, Michael. Thank you. We have been wondering, yes. uh, Michael Wuma, who is Michael Wuma? Is, where is he from? He sounds like one of us, but yes. we don't know. <laughs> we want to know those details. Yes. Who is Michael Wuma? Where does he come from? Who are his parents? Yes. So, Michael Wuma is half Samia, half Acholi. Yes. And uh, gladly, my name is both in Samia mm. and Luo. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. So, my dad is uh, Titus Owundo. Mm. And my mom is uh, Dorina Willow, mm. also Wundo. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thereafter. Mm. So, yes, so that's the Samia element and the Acholi element. Okay. Yeah, so that's who I am. So, it's your mother who is Acholi? Very Acholi. Uh, which one From do you Patiro. speak? From Patiro? Yes. Oh, you're one of us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, which one do you speak better, Samia or Acholi? I speak a lot of Samia. Mm. I speak very, very, very little Acholi, unfortunately. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Kobango? <laughs> you will learn slowly by slowly. I will learn. We will we'll, we'll keep interacting. Yes. I'll learn. I'll yes. pick it up. You'll pick it up. <laughs> yes. Yes. So you're actually 0.5%. It around about there. <laughs> and you're Samia? On a scale of 10? Yes. Uh, about 8. Oh, splendid. Yes. I, I spent a lot of time with uh, my kids from, from Samia. Hmm. We, are, we interacted quite a bit. Hmm. And uh, my kinsmen and uh, folk from Acholi. We didn't spend a lot of time together. Most of uh, my relatives were out of the country. Uh, we had our grandma around. We'd mm. go there from time to time for holiday. In Patero? No, 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 no. Mm. In Kampala, she's in Kampala oh, as well. yes. okay. Mm. And, um, and uh, we would rarely go to the village because deep down where it was, where the actual village was, due to the insurgency, mm. there was a bit of fear. And then we'd often go to my dad's village mm. and also have a lot of cousins come back mm. and forth and you know language is picked up with by interaction yes, yes. so we didn't get a lot of that and most of my cousins that are outside the country would mm. come back and they're also technically basama <laughs> so they also had a few things here and there to speak and speak with my mom mm. but you don't practice it so often you mm. pick up a few words mm. and then you're off to speak something else and mm. then when you come back you can understand because mom spoke to you because she would yeah. really try her best. To speak but to she's you. by herself yes. or with grandma mm. here and there, a few cousins here and there. Your auntie comes back for a holiday mm. or something like that. So did you ever go to Patero or have you visited Patero? Patero in particular I've mm. actually never been to. Mm. But I've been to Gulu and I've been to different parts of Gulu. But I intend to go there. 
because I must get to my roots. You must get to your maternal yes, roots. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> but sure. of course, kafuri tini na wa na yana kumbeti wati yu pamba kulo ni ngechi ngere ati yana maiko wumu wati lokile mo no piana leba chole wana pete akutwal wana aki samia miana yeye ati ya chole lepe maduong maya lugha mabe aye lep samia bila go away mapi ya ati akutwal kache pebi wini nyo pebi niang lep mo no mo tika lugha nini. So yes, I've been telling them what we were talking yeah, about. Matidi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Michael, tell me about uh, talk to me about your your background, uh, growing up, your childhood. You've told me already about your parents. What was it like growing up? Um, so growing up actually was very interesting because uh, my dad is a pastor. He's a, he's an accountant. He's into business, a bit of farming. So it was this and the other. But we grew up in a Christian family and thankfully due to a lot of um, church background I learned music in church and then when I went to Macquarie College School in secondary school uh, I learned traditional instruments mm. and learned uh, Western music theory as well mm. and interacted with different people from different walks of life especially on the musical angle yeah. so that led me to have a uh, like a wider perspective of music but also as a child uh, we grew up in a home of six so um, uh, three boys three girls Are you the eldest no 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 I'm the second last born oh my goodness yeah. you're the baby among the babies I, I'm so close you're to the so baby, close to yeah, the baby. Yeah, yes mm -hmm. um, my younger sister plays uh, instruments as well okay. uh, my elder brothers play instruments as well mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of music in the family. Were your parents uh, musicians or artists? My dad plays guitar. Okay. Yeah, but but not like professional professional musician, but he plays guitar. So I grew up, or oh, the guitar was at home. Okay. It was already there. Yes. Uh, you so it was grew a big up advantage. seeing music, yes. literally. Yes. <laughs> what about school? First, take me back about uh, the schools you attended and all those other details. I, I went to school at uh, Joy Primary School. By that time, it was in Nakasero. Mm -hmm. Shifted to Makere now. Mm -hmm. And then I went to secondary school at Makere College School, mm. and I went to university at Makere University. Everything happened. Basically, at I was just yeah. round about that hill the whole time. Yes. So I, yeah, at the university I did bachelor of statistics, and then music was on the side. That's but tough. I, you mean you're that <laughs> tough? <laughs> yeah, but mm. I always knew that I loved music, mm. so back and forth every space that i would get i would be in the music room whoever wanted to find me i'm either in the music room or the field doing sports playing basketball mm. running a bit playing some bit of soccer mm. to keep fit mm. but most of the time i was in the music music room mm. and then doing my maths as well till i went into statistics so wow. yeah wow. so i have those two facets yes. yeah. if if someone were to ask you at what <coughs> point do you feel like this is the time i fell in love with music hmm it's difficult to point, it's really difficult to point because I've grown up with music all my life. Literally, I was born into music. Because, mm. like I said, my dad plays guitar, there was guitar at home. Uh, we are at church and there's music, the praise and worship team. Then, as a young boy, I sort of entered the choir at some point, playing instruments, playing drums. Then I went to keyboard, mm. then I played bass. Whoa. Then, yeah, just investigating, you know, as a child. It's more you're of like... Being, you're inquisitive. Very inquisitive. Mm. And then I found myself in it, literally. I just couldn't run away from it. I think music was calling me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't know when I actually fell in love with music. I can't get a particular point, but I can say all my life I've been in it. You've been in music. Yeah. So at what point do you feel like, okay, this is what I love and I need to do it professionally? Okay, so about S3, S4, mm. uh, during, in my free time and holidays, I would coach other students and pupils traditional instruments that I had learned in school. Oh, yes. which and ones the, were those? Uh, the akogo, uh, the adungu. And the xylophones. Yeah, the xylophone as well, yes. uh, the ndere, the, the, the local flute. Mm. And they liked what I was doing. And my music teacher at the time, Mr. Kaizi and Mr. Busulwa. Uh, From Macquarie College. Yes, uh, yeah, the late Mr. Busulwa. Mm. Uh, they encouraged me to keep getting better at it. And then whenever they, they, they would have uh, events, because Mr. Kaisi had a troop, traditional troop. Mm. So he would keep calling me. I wasn't part of the troop, mm. but he liked they was playing what I was playing. So I would keep going back and forth and play with them and play with them. Mm. So at some point, they, pro they probably thought I've sort of entered the troop in a way, because mm. you receive payment. Like, okay, 
So this thing that I'm doing is actually and that is a profession. Like S4VAC. It's like S4 VAC. Uh, one was of that? your holidays. Uh, like 30k, 20k. Not bad. Yeah. But I mean it was it was just part of of training for me. Mm. But for them they were seeing me already like as someone that's already ready. Yes. yes. So back and forth I realized, oh this is a profession, this is something that I can do. And then um, about S6 VAC, round about there, uh, I kept meeting people that would go to the jam sessions at the National Theatre, at Sabrina's Pub, ETC. And they were performing, I would learn from them, listen to someone playing guitar, try mm -hmm. to play what they're playing, maybe bass, drums and so on. They say, no, no, actually these are bands that are set up and this is someone's actual job, they get paid. So in my mind I was like, I came to actually have fun and jam, but this can be a career. So at, at that point when you're going to the Sabrina's yes, pub and whatever, so, yeah. what was the dad thinking, him being a pastor, did, didn't he think like you being out? Yeah, he, he, he was never actually comfortable with it as a career choice. But the fact that I was improving with my musicality, he would say, okay, he's gone somewhere, he's doing his thing. The only problem is that it would be late night. Yes. And there's a problem with that because you have your son, yes. he's pretty young, he's coming back home in the wee hours, because mm -hmm. we always had those issues. and. Also, the fact that I was pursuing a very different course at the university mm. and then wanted to do now professional music. Mm. Though we, had, we had actually that kind of... Uh, what they call it? Yes. Mm. And then later on, he understood what I was doing. So mm. he put that behind us. Mm. But like I'm saying, when did I actually realize I can do it professionally? The time I traveled. So I traveled with uh, a traditional troupe of my teacher. Went to France and Spain for about two months. When was that? That was 2000. You are still in secondary school. 2006, I think. Mm. I was just done. Mm. So we went, we went to France and Spain. Mm -hmm. we, we performed and we did what we, whatever we did. But for me, it was more of exposure, etc. And then you interact with different troops, different bands, and so. And these are professionals, and this is what they do for a living. So I realized, okay, so I can monetize my talent. Mm as well as my education side. So afterwards I created a band with a friend of mine called Chinobe Habat. Our band was called Soul Beat Africa. Just the two of you? Uh, we started it up, but yeah. we, of course we had other members. Yes. There was Baka on the percussions. There was producer Alan, right now he's playing with Aveka. He's mm. the bass player. Mm. There's Jude who was playing the keys. Ambrose was the drummer. And Sewa was playing other percussions. Our group was, um, we were trying to do world music trying to investigate how we can get modern instruments, Western instruments, and mix them with traditional instruments mm -hmm. and create our own sound. So, but it was more like a youth group. Yeah. You, know, you know when you still have time, you're free and so on. Was that after university now? This was now, this was now towards the end of university, like midway, yes. yeah, about second year, right mm -hmm. about there. Mm -hmm. So we toured Africa. We did about 18 countries. Wow. Yes. Your, your own band? Yes, and we, did, and we did also a tour in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So after that, of course, everybody had their own path, their own walks of life and so on. But that was, that was like the start to spring up my entry into... So someone who is watching you today might think, yes. oh my goodness, just starting a band and you're already traveling yes. across the world. Did you have like sponsors? Did you have like some guidance? Because it's, it's not easy to of travel. Of course, definitely, <laughs> yes. So we... The style of music we were doing was very um, appreciated by most of the expatriate community. Mm. Uh, so we got a lot of help from Alliance Francais. It was courtesy of Alliance Francais that we traveled in Africa. Mm. We sort of won, um, what would I call it? Um, it wasn't a competition per se, mm. but you bid for it and you win. Mm. And then they take uh, an artist perhaps from East Africa, next oh. time from West Africa, another time from South Africa. Moise Kier got something like that as well from RFI and did a tour. Mm. So this, this used to happen a lot under Alliance France back in the day, German Culture Center, mm -hmm. these kind of agencies, uh, institutions, mm -hmm. and I actually thank them a lot for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what happened with us. It, we had started it up and immediately we did what we did. So. Yeah. And you see, you, you started saying yourself, oh my goodness, this thing is bringing money. Yeah, to and I can do it, yes. And it was the first time, how lucky It was the first are. time, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> but, but you see, uh, I'm, I'm not one that believes in luck 100%. Mm. Because I believe in being in the right place at the right time, yes. That's where the lucky part would be. But using your opportunity is something else as well. Because we could all be 
under the showers of blessings and one of us uses an umbrella and now one of us gets soaked in the blessing yes. but we're all in the same place so how you use the opportunity matters well, yes so i may i may be in a situation where we are lucky to have blessings here mm. and look at the blessings and laugh at them and move away yes. and i take hold of it and move to the next level very true. Yes. Very, speaking of blessings, someone yes. is going to say, we, of course we've seen you play uh, instruments, which is very mesmerizing, yeah. but um, we've not had you sing. Yes. <laughs> someone is going to, someone who doesn't know who is watching you today, yes. how come you don't sing and you only play instruments? So, um, one thing that many people don't do is introspection and self-analysis. Understanding your strengths and weaknesses mm. and understanding what you're better at and probably what you need to improve on. Mm. And then getting a weapon of strength and using it not just to monetize it, but to better yourself. Mm. So, yes, back in the day, even growing up, because it's a musical family that I'm in, we used to sing and sing in choir and sing in church. But I realized my level of performance with my instrument is way higher. Mm. So actually, I don't even know the last time I tried to work on my vocals to be so good, because mm. My focus went to the instrument because I know that's my strength. Mm. Yes, and I put that at the forefront. Mm. Yeah, did so you try I can singing at some point? Like from I did, but, but, but never as, as a professional or never to, to better it to that level. Mm. So perhaps the, sometimes we do our band music and I do sing and back up. Perhaps the, the lead singer, because for them, voc vocals are their forefront and their strength. Yes. So I'll perhaps back them up somewhere just to keep it going and yeah. so on. But the instrument is, you. is my voice. Yeah. What about other kinds of singing, like rap or something? Uh, no, I think there's people that do it better and they should do their thing. <laughs> they I, foc do I focus on what I do well um. and do it to the best of my ability. Absolutely. Because yes. as, as someone out there will not understand, or, yes. and because you know, because of our background, yes. people don't know how how to give credit where credit to is due. Because yes. playing an <coughs> instrument is not something that you wake up and, and play. And with you, you play all sorts of instruments. Really. I play so many instruments, that's true. Which ones are those? Hmm. So, on the Western instruments, I play, uh, I play a bit of keyboards, I play a bit of drums, mm. some trumpet, uh, of course the acoustic and electric guitar, mm. bass guitar as well. What have I forgotten? For now, I think that's it. Mm. Um, I tried a bit of saxophone, but mm. I played it for only a week, and then where we had it, it was taken away, so I stopped mm. investigating on that. Mm. Same to violin. It's that, it's that stage where I was trying to investigate different things. Mm. Then traditional instruments, I play the adungu, the oh, akogo, yes. Nice. The ndingidi, which we call the orutu, mm. uh, rigirigi. Mm. Uh, I play the ndere, I play xylophone, traditional drums. drums. Yes, so it's, it's, it's just music for me was like, you, you know when someone is like in a candy store? Mm. I'm gonna pick this, pick the other, pick the other. Or someone is like into a lot of toy cars and things, they excite you. So when I would get into the music room, I'd get excited. I've tried the drums enough. Now let me try this instrument. What sound does it produce? Things like that. So at some point you realize you're actually playing everything. So let me ask, did, yes. did you like teach yourself? How, how does it happen for you? Um, so in church, we would have of course people that are playing the instruments themselves that have learned, I don't know from where. Mm. But after the service, perhaps you ask for a couple of lessons, someone is busy, then is busy, then you learn. You probably seen them play, then you try to play what they played, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. You, try, you say maybe I'll try again next Sunday. Because there's many of you that want to try and there's a few instruments, it's in church. So in church it was that kind of thing. Then you learn a bit, but then maybe they saw you try last time and this time the person who was supposed to play drums didn't come for service. But you saw some boy trying. Maybe you can play. If, can you come for the quiet training and rehearsal, maybe play something around, say, oh, that's my opportunity. So you try. That's what I was saying. There will be blessings, but what you do about them is your opportunity. So you go and play. So that's how I started learning drums. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the keyboards. The keyboardist maybe is going to play in another church that day. There's ministry, then you have to play, cover, or play with the children's choir, something like that. Mm -hmm. In school, uh, I was doing music. I did music actually up to S6, because I started in S1 and it was mandatory. But for me, I really wanted to do it. So there's extra times in break time, I would find that someone... That is music as a, as a class, as yes, a lesson? Yes, okay. I would find someone that's probably going to practice in break time or lunch time, and then you ask them to help you learn something extra. Because they taught you maybe the xylophone during music class, mm. but you feel it wasn't enough because there was no attention on one-on-one. Yes. -on -one. Please help me with this, then you learn. But 
you know he doesn't have a lot of time, so you have to be attentive and learn real quick. When he's gone away, you try to practice what he's done mm. and give yourself extra hours. So, 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 did, yeah. so did, did you teach yourself even how to read music? Cause no, 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 no. Um, so I studied music from S1 up to S6. Okay. Within studying music, there's practicals where I do the instrumentation and there's theory when you learn how to read music, how to notate music, and how very, to transcribe. It's very complicated. It's the hardest. It's not hard per se. Mm. If you are disciplined about something and you're talented in it, the, my, my perception of it will be very different from yours. Mm. You'll find somebody that find studying chemistry a no-brainer and you find someone that's very good at literature mm. you find another person that's good at history and a person that's good at physics but if if you ask the chemistry person to probably give run for a discussion in the literature department you say hey, 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 this is really difficult mm. and then this one will find the one is easy so i can't say it's particularly difficult but it's more engaging and needs more attention and the thing is, music is a language in itself. It's an international language. And if, if you learn the music theory, it becomes easy. When I travel the time, like I told you about, mm. you meet musicians from different uh, walks of life, different countries. But you're going to play a music piece that includes a Chinese, it includes an African, it includes someone from the US, etc. Mm. So all they've given is transcribed music. You have to read your, your piece of music, do your personal rehearsal, meet for the sound check and, that's and what perform. I wanted, that's what I wanted to find out. <laughs> but, but, you uh, can one one what you can do 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 Michael, that's the part I needed to understand. Yes. So someone says, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a musician, I'm a singer, can yeah. you please come and play an instrument? Yeah. How does that work? Um, locally in Uganda or yes. internationally? Let's start from Uganda. Um, like, like how they engage me or what, what happens? Or, or, or do you mean? Well, you are telling me about how they give you a script and they read the, you read the music and you do the research and then you play. Okay, um, that doesn't happen very often in Uganda. Because yeah. most times, um, okay, there's two ways of doing it that we do here. Most times it will either be that the producer and the artist came up with the track mm. and all it needs is an extra piece of live instrumentation. It could be a saxophone, a violin, a guitar, maybe the dingy D or whatever it is. So you, you, you listen to the demo and get ideas of how you would want to better it from your perspective. Mm. And then you meet the producer and the vocalist and they share with you their ideas. So you brainstorm and then find middle ground and then layer the tracks. So there's that way. Another that way, is so complicated, Mike. <laughs> oh <laughs> well, it could be. Yes. Then another way... There's a lot of creativity. Yes. All these things take a lot of creativity. Another way is creating together. You could set a date and start from scratch. And all of you um, create your parts individually, like what a band would literally do. The drummer writes his own part, the keyboardist, everybody, the vocalist, the, the lyricist. And then you, you keep building the train on the tracks till you go. Now that takes a lot of time mm. and it needs a unit that's together. So there's, there's two ways of doing it. So in UG, it's, it's a bit easier, so to say. Mm. Because if, for example, I'm supposed to um, play a guitar part or a keyboard part in um, a track that's for somebody perhaps in Russia mm. and they don't have the audio out yet and they send me a script. Mm. They send me the manuscript and the, it's in staff notation. Mm. I, I should be able to read it mm. <coughs> and, li and know what the parts are like and then know where I should come in. Read As the in silence. read the music. Yeah, read the music and then play it and then know where the guitar, these are the guitar lines they want. It is like, that happens for orchestras usually. Yes. So they say, perhaps you're going to play with Metropole Orchestra. You're going to play with them on December the 2nd. We all fly in on November 20th. Uh, you meet with each other, ETC, sound check is on this date, blah, blah, blah. This is the script. Are there times when you don't even know the song? Yeah, you don't know the song, nobody knows the song. So. They send you the script, you have about 20 pages or 100 pages or 2 pages, depending on what 
the function is, is and how long you're going to perform and what set they want. Mm -hmm. So they say, as the guitarist, this is what you're going to play. So you read, and know your parts, etc. So when you arrive, thank you, my name is Michael Omar from Uganda. Oh, so the guitarist, good, I'll plug in here, etc. Okay, guys, we're going for rehearsal. Rehearsal is not learning the song, it's playing your parts. So you read your part and you know how to play. Now that's where the music theory comes in that I was telling you about. So there's that angle. That, that sounds so complicated, <laughs> so difficult. No, but if you've studied the music and you know how to read it, you've, you're classically trained, you can definitely do it. Mm -hmm. There's many people that are trained to do that. Mm -hmm. Then there's people, there's, there's that angle for orchestra and also band, there's pop bands and brass bands that are hybrid. They have that facet and pop. Then there's the new school way, where I just send you a track to your country and then I someone gives you like a microcosm of what they want you to do and they tell you the rest create so you're free and you just listen to it maybe it's a song by Davido and he wants a guitar from you because it's like a song that we did uh, for Jason Derulo yes Impressive. the time when there's gonna be MTV Awards mm -hmm. <coughs> so they wanted the Ndingidi mm. yes and they didn't they didn't have an actual script of how they wanted to, to be played mm. so they had to send me a demo and I think about how an ending giddy would fit into that music. Mm. So I have liberty of creation at that point. And that creation is, is, is given to you? Yes. The rights are to give it to you? Yes, because at this point, he's never played the ending giddy. It's from Uganda. Mm. But he's heard it everywhere. This Orutu, it, uh, okay, yes, but you know what? I think it's really just from your region. Mm. You know what? Create something. So you give them it. Uh, you say, um, I have this option, this option, this option, and the other. I like that one. Mm. Okay, so when you... When we have that option, and we build on it, create it, mix it, record easy it. Again. Yes, it's an easier way. Okay, what about the type, the part of reading music that that happened in Uganda? Um, so we have classically trained musicians, and we have musicians that learn by ear. Mm. You see, like I was saying, when I was in church, learning music in church, and most times people that learn music within the gig somewhere, in a jam session somewhere, it's usually not classically trained. Yeah. There's no musical theory that is at the forefront. It's up to you to do personal research and learn about music theory. Usually it's just katikubao <laughs> to play. Uh -huh. We'll play the one, now I'll go here. Yes, so yes. you go home and listen, hey, this was the one, one means this, mm -hmm. four is this. So you now start understanding Polamba, how it works. Uh, like you understand? Person. Yes. Uh, Mark, I want us to go for a short break, then we come back and you tell us how music is done in Uganda. Is it professionally or not professionally? <laughs> ah, <laughs> all right. Michael. <laughs> Uma,